Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about how big are the Gutstein sequence numbers. So first of all, the Gutstein sequence, probably a lot of you had heard of it already, is a very, very fast growing function that has a growth rate of around f of epsilon not n, which is pretty fast growing, um, which grows way, way, way faster than even any extensions of the chain error notation and in a, on the other hand it grows around the same rate as the tetrational level of beef and it grows faster than all recursive functions provable total in piano arithmetic so first of all uh, a very quick uh, explanation of what is the Goodstein sequence so basically what is it about is that um, Basically, any positive integer greater than one, um, you can write it in hereditary base n. Again, you can look it up on Googleology or Google it online. There's some very good explanation over there if you want to know more detail. Just one quick example, the number 100 can be written this way in base 2. Uh, but you have to change the numbers to two, so the six, five, you know, so it therefore it becomes this thing over here. And the rules, what are the rules for the Gustin sequence? So basically for the next step, so first you have this thing over here, you convert this uh, number 100 to base two, and then you pump the base by one and then subtract one uh, at the end. So basically, you turn this thing, the next step would be you turn all the tools to threes and minus one at the end. Therefore, um, so the number at the end, this thing, it's around two times 10 to the power of 14. So it's already very big in the second step. So this is just a very brief example to show how quickly this sequence grows. And then the next step, you change all the threes to four, something like that. This is from Googleology. And this number at the end is around 10 to the power of 156. And then the next step, you change all the, five, uh, all the fours to five and just try to imagine how big that number is at the end. And what about the Gustin sequence? So for the Gustin sequence, it's not about the number you get here. It's not the answer for this sequence. It is actually um, uh, how many steps it this sequence is going to reach zero, which is kind of ridiculous or it doesn't make sense. Like this number, it's at first, it seems to grow very, very, very quickly. So how on earth does this thing it eventually goes to zero and that's it which is called the Goodstein theorem so for the Goodstein sequence for all n this sequence eventually peaks declines and return to zero and again this is the Goodstein theorem the key here is the thing here eventually you subtract one if you take this away of course it will go on forever uh, to infinity eventually you know um, given infinite number of time um, but this thing subtracts one will eventually mix this Gustin sequence to peak declines and return to zero anyway so this sequence Gustin sequence it's the number of steps for this thing at the end to reach zero so this number would go bigger and bigger and bigger it grows very fast but eventually after very 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 long time it would peak declines and slowly get back to zero and the g the Gustin sequence is how many steps it, work, it requires to reach zero so imagine the number of steps is going to be very very big that's why this sequence grows very fast as fast as f of epsilon not n so basically, here are uh, some of the numbers. Again, these is all from the Googleology wiki. So if you use one, if the number is one, of course, uh, it takes just one step to get to zero. And then at first, it doesn't grow very quickly. Um, and then for number two, it takes three steps to reach zero. And then for three, it takes five steps. So still not too crazy. However, the number four, suddenly it becomes a very big number. Um, I mean, the number of steps to reach zero for the number four, it takes around this many steps. So this is a very big number. And for five, it takes this many steps to reach zero, already beyond anything in physics, basically. Um, because the biggest number in physics is the Poincaré recurrence time. 
And for number six, it takes this many, and F here is the, it is the fast going hierarchy. And then um, for G8 here is already F of omega plus one, three minus three. And for, again, you can pause the video um, to read it yourself if you want. And it's also on Google Wiki key. For G G12 is already f of omega plus 1 of this thing over here, which is greater than G64 grams number. So for the number 12, the number of steps to reach 0 is greater than grams number already. For the 12, um, if you put 12 into the good thing sequence, and then for, I'm going to save a few, so G16 is already f of omega cubed. So far beyond the G sequence already for, you know, the gram sequence. For G20 is f omega to the omega. And then, of course, eventually you need a very, very big uh, positive integer um, to get, you know, crazy growth rate or, you know, crazy big number. So for this thing over here, g of to the power of 65, 5, 3, 6 plus 4, it's f of omega to the omega to the omega to the omega of this thing. And the last example here, it's, you know, if you plug in 2n, and in this case, this is the double arrow or, you know, tetration. So this is equal to g of 2 double arrow n. And the answer is somewhere around here. So f of omega n minus 1. And again, this is tetration. So that means omega to the omega to the omega to the omega, blah, 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 for n minus 1 number of levels. And in terms of the beef, again, similar growth rate as the tetrational beef. And this is the tetrational beef. So this thing over here, this is titration. <clears throat> so three double arrow of n minus two and three. This is how fast and how big are the good scene sequence number. Again, for you free to uh, look it up the full definition online. So anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice day.